All right, we're back on the video train. This is section 10.6, Applications of Logarithms. For this set of notes, you will need not just the note sheet, but you're going to need, to need a scientific calculator with a log function and or their textbook. Turn to page 812 because there's a table there that can help you calculate the logarithms of base 10 numbers. Here we go. How do we use common logarithms to solve equations involving powers and to evaluate logs with any given base? So we actually have not done calculations for what the log values are. We're going to do that today. So common logarithms are logs in base 10, which makes sense because we work in base 10. We count in base 10, we add, multiply, divide. All our computations are done in base 10. So that's what is most comfortable for us. If you see log 7 without any base listed, that's meaning that means log base 10 of 7. So if you just see a log 7 without a number there, you can assume it's base 10. So that's what your calculator does. You'll see a log button. It's calculating logs in base 10, just like what I said. All right. Now, if you look at page 812 on your textbook, it's table 3, common logarithms of number. You will see this table. And this is a pretty handy table that you can use to approximate logs of up to four significant digits. Now you're probably thinking, why do we need a table? We have a calculator. In a way, I agree, but the table's there and I still want to teach how to use it. So what you're going to do is to find an approximation for log of x for any x value between 1 and 10. You're going to look for the first two digits of x in the n row and the third digit in the column to the right of your row. So. If you take a look at your table, it starts with 10, and then 11, it goes all the way down to 99. Now let's see how you use this. Example 1A, use a calculator or table 3 to find log 4.6. So, obviously with a calculator, it's pretty easy. You just plug it in. If you have a table, you're going to go to the 46 row. Remember, the table represents numbers between 1 and 10. So, n is 46. So you're going to go all the way down to the 46 column, and... You're going to, oh, 46 row, and then the column you'll look for zero because that's the third digit. You will see a 6628. So I encourage you to see how this works, and if you are confused, I will show you in class on Monday. But that's your answer. Now, if you want to use your calculator, you just punch in log 4.6, and yeah, that is a lot easier. But using a log table for numbers greater than 10, you'll have to rewrite the number in scientific notation and apply the first law that we looked at last week. So log of m times n is equal to the log of m plus the log of n. Remember, the log of a product of two numbers is equal to the log of each individual number added together. So example 1b, use a calculator or table 3 to find the log of 283,000. Well, the first thing you're going to have to do to use a table is to rewrite the number in scientific notation. Now, on a quiz, I might just ask you to do this because putting it on a calculator is kind of silly. So you will rewrite this as log 283,000 equals the log of 2.83 times 10 to the fifth. Now you have a product of two numbers. So you will rewrite this as the sum of the log of each individual number. Log of 2.83 plus the log of 10 to the fifth. Well, you should know right now that the log of 10 to the fifth is pretty easy to calculate. It's basically 5 times the log of 10, which is 1. So you still need to deal with this log of 2.83 thing. Now you can plug that into your calculator, but you probably wouldn't have done that because you would have done this first here. Or you can use a table. You're going to look up the first number and the first number after the decimal under the end column. So you're looking at the 28 row, and then you're going to go to the column 3 because that's the third digit. So if you look there, you will see the number corresponds to 0.4518. Therefore, the log of 283,000 is 0.4518 plus 5, or 5.4518. So you can use a table to calculate the log of almost any number because you can always rewrite the number as some form of scientific notation with a product of an exponent of base 10. Now, the couple words here, characteristic and mantissa. In 1b, you showed that you can find a common a logarithm by writing it as the sum of an integer. This is the characteristic. The characteristic is the integer part of the log. A non-negative number less than 1, the decimal part, is called the mantissa. You will look this up under the table. 
because you can always write any number as a product of something in base 10. The base 10 part is an integer. It could be 0. It could be negative. It could be positive. But you can always have this number here between 1 and 10. That's what you're going to look up on the table. That's called the mantissa. Are these words going to be on your quiz? Probably not. But if you see them written in some journal or something, you'll know what they mean. 1C. Use a calculator to find log of 0 .0065. Now, of course, on a calculator, you just punch it in, hit the log button, and bam, you're done. But using table 3, the first thing, again, you're going to have to do is rewrite it in scientific notation. So, remember to count the spaces, move the decimal three spots to the right, which means you're looking at 6.5 times 10 to the negative third. Now, you can rewrite this as the product of, excuse, as a sum of log of 6.5 plus the log of 10 to the negative third. By now, you should recognize it quickly that this is negative 3. So you will need to look up 65 on the table, row 65, and the first column 0. And if you do that, you get 0.8129. So what you're going to do is now add the two parts together. The mantissa is 0.8129. The characteristic is negative 3. And so your final answer is negative 2.187. Again, you can punch this in on your calculator. This class will not require you to use tables, but I still think you should learn how to use them. Because when you get to other classes, tables are actually sometimes easier to use in the calculator. So, as I mentioned, if you have a calculator, you don't have to go through all that. But I think it's good to know the principles behind it, that you can create a log by reducing it to some product of a number between 1 and 10 times 10 to some power. And if you understand that, you'll recognize that logs constructed in that way and you lose that if you just use the calculator so I'm going to you encourage you guys to use the tables not because they make the computation easier but because then you can recognize where the number that the log represents comes from so on a quiz I might give you a table and you will have to solve a problem using the table or you will not even get a calculator and you will be forced to use the table the anti-logarithm if log y equals a, the number y is sometimes called the anti-logarithm or anti-log of a. Now, we never had a word to call this thing before. We just called it some number. Now we do. It's called the anti-log of a. On a calculator, you're going to use the 10 to the x key. You often see it either next to the log key or as a second or alternate function that goes along with the log key. Now, to use a table, what you're going to do is have to rewrite your a as a sum of two numbers the mantissa and the characteristic the characteristic is always going to be the whole number immediately less than your value of a so if it's 1.5 the characteristic is going to be 1 if it's negative 3.5 the characteristic is going to be the whole number less than negative 3.5 or negative 4 the mantissa is always going to be some positive decimal between 0 and 1 so to calculate the antilog, you will first have to rewrite as a characteristic and mantissa. The characteristic is always the whole number just below the value of a. Let's see how this works. Find x to three significant digits. Log x equals 3.7135. So you can look for the whole number immediately below this value, which is 3. So you can rewrite it as 3 plus 0.7135. Now what you need to do is use your table to look up 7135 and you'll find it under row n 51 and column 7 which means that your decimal value or your value between 1 and 10 is going to be 517 or 5.17 so you will rewrite your sum here I switch it around log of 5.17 plus the log of 10 to the third power that's where the three goes now you're gonna work backwards the law one tells you you can multiply these two numbers and you end up with a number in scientific notation you convert that back to a regular number and you get the log of 5170 so X has to be 5170 so again to rewrite it as a sum of two numbers you're gonna find the whole number immediately below your log your a value and then add the decimal on top of that Go ahead and try to be. Remember, you're looking for the whole number immediately below this value. So this whole number is negative 3, and you're going to add 0 
Now what you're going to do is look up 5465 on the table, and what you will see is that it is under column 352, row 35, column 2. So that corresponds with 3.52 as a number between 1 and 10. So we know that log of x equals the log of 3.52 plus the log of 10 to the negative third, because that corresponds with negative 3. Now you're going to rewrite this as scientific notation, and then rewrite it as a single number. So your value of x here is 0 0.00352. And yes, again, I will acknowledge that if you punch in 10 to the negative 2.4535, that's a lot faster. Which is probably why you will not get questions like this on a quiz or a test. But you need to know where they come from. Let's look at example 3. Find the value of the fourth root of 38.2 to three significant digits. Now, you will have to do this on your calculator because well, it's just easier that way. So you'll have to rewrite 38.2, the fourth root of that, as some sort of number with an exponent, a fractional exponent. So if you use a calculator, it's pretty simple, but you still have to realize what you have to rewrite this as. Remember, this is the same as 38.2 to the first, so this expression is equal to 38.2 to the one-fourth power. Remember, the exponent inside divided by the root, one-fourth. All right, so you punch that in your calculator. You're going to use the X to the Y key or the caret key, depending on what kind of calculator you have. And you put in 38.2 XY 1 fourth or 0.25, and you should get 2.49. So that's pretty simple, which means you're never going to get this as a question on a test. Unless I do something like this. Make you use the tables. So if you let X equal the fourth root of 38.2, there's actually a way to do this. Yes, there were a day when we didn't have calculators. You will rewrite the log of x as 1 fourth log of 38.2. Now I skipped a step here. Remember, you can take the log of both sides. So this is 38.2 to the 1 fourth power. If that's 38.2 to the 1 fourth, you can move the exponent here to make it a coefficient in front of the log. All right, so let's remember. 38.2 to 1 to the fourth, the log of that, you can take the exponent, move it outside. So if you rewrite this now as a number in scientific notation, you get log of 3.82 times 10 to the first. So you're going to look up row 38, column 2, and you'll see the number 5821. So this is the same as 1 fourth times the quantity. And what you could have done is write log 3.82 plus log 10 to the first. So you have 1 plus 0.5821 equaling 0.3955. I guess you still either need a calculator to do this or do some long division. All right, but either way, you get log x equals 0.3955. Now you go back to the table and you're going to look up 3955 on the table and you will see that it's row 24, column 9. It's 3962. That's the closest one. So you look at the end and the column and you see it's two, row 24 column 9 which corresponds with the number 2.49. Now if you're still struggling using the table I will be there in class on Monday to help guide you through it. But the table is a very handy tool because sometimes technology fails you. Change a base formula. This is a very important formula to memorize. So we had the three laws of logarithms. This is kind of like law number four. It's very important. You will use it a lot in no matter what math class you take and what science class you take because you're going to have to use logarithms quite a bit. If you know the base B of a number and wish to change the base to, say, base A, you can use the following. The log of base A of X equals log base B of X divided the by the log base B of A. And this probably would be easier if we use some numbers, which we're going to do in the next few examples. So log base A of X equals log base B of X divided by log base B of A. So let's say you had a number like base 4. This allows you to convert it into base 10. And what that allows you to do is use the calculator to do the computations. So remember this formula. You will use it quite a bit. Example 4, find log base 3 of 5. So what you're going to do is you want to convert it into log of base 10 because we have a way to calculate that, either with the calculator or the table. So using the change of base formula, you can say the log base 3 of 5 is equal to log base 10 of 5 divided by the log base 10 of 3. So you'll punch those numbers in your calculator or look them up on your table, 
and you will see that it's 0 0.6990 divided by 0 0.4771 or 1.465. 5a, give the solution in calculation ready form and this is a specific form that you're going to want to follow because it shows me that you understand the concept behind the change of base formula. Then you can perform the calculation with your calculator. All right, make sure you show your work. 4 to the x power equals 50. Now what you can do is you can take the log of both sides, and that's one of the functions that you can do. Just like you add a number to both sides, or just like you multiply a number to both sides, you can take the log of both sides. So the log of 4 to the x power equals the log of 50. And I'm going to choose base 10 because that's what your calculator can do. Now, what you see here is that 4 to the x, the x can be moved outside just like using the log of logarithms before. So you get x times the log of 4 equals the log of 50. Well, now log 4, remember, is a number. Don't let the notation fool you. It's just a number like 1, 2, or 3. So what you can do is divide both sides by the log of 4. And so you get x is log 50 over log 4. When you do this, this is called calculation ready form because now you're ready to input the numbers into your calculator. When you solve these problems on a quiz or a test, I want to see this because that tells me you understand how the change of base formula works and you know how to do the algebra. Now you can punch in the numbers on your calculator. 1.699 for log 50. Point oh, um, point six oh two one for log 4, divide them, and your x is 2.82. So make sure when you solve these, you put them into the proper form. Use the change of base formula after you take the log of both sides. 5b, 1.5 to the negative x equals 0.5. Go ahead and try this yourself. Remember the three steps. C take the log of both sides, move the exponent to the coefficient, and then solve for x, use your calculator. Go. All right, let's take the log of both sides. You get log of 1.5 to the negative x equals the log of 0.5. Now you're going to move that negative x outside. So it's negative x log 1.5 equals the log of 0.5. Now you will divide both sides by the log of 1.5. And your answer in calculation ready form is negative log 0.5 divided by log 1.5. At this point, you input the numbers in your calculator and you get 1.71. So even if you had a calculator, you would know have you would have to know how to do the algebra here. Otherwise, you can't solve the problem. We have one more question. It's 5C. Again, put this in calculation ready form, then go ahead and Use the calculator to crank out the solution. Give this one a shot, and then we'll be done. All right, take the log of both sides, and you get log of 2 to the 3x equals log 7. What you're going to want to do is move the exponent to the front, so you get 3x log 2 equals log 7. Now you're going to divide both sides by 3 and divide both sides by the log of 2. And so your calculation-ready form is log 7 divided by 3 log 2. So you're going to remember, have to put this as part of your work. Now you can put those numbers in your calculator, and you should get 0.936. Now, what you might have noticed is that you could rewrite this. You could rewrite this as log of 2 cubed or log 8. That would save you a little bit of work on this side here. Either way, you, you get the right answer, and either way is fine. You could have also just converted this to 2 cubed to the x power. So written 8 to the x, and then you would have just had x log 8 here. Either way, that's fine. All those are possible answers. And so there's more than, sometimes more than one way to do the calculation. But when you're done at the end, you should still get the same value. All right, that's it for 10.6. You will be given homework problems on Monday. If you have any questions regarding 10.6, you can ask me in class. I'm sure there will be questions on how to use the table.